it is uh, a little bit harsh to talk about uh, as far as the term strategy is not maybe very well fits what someone can expect in, in uh, following this term as far as the um, our strategy in monitoring in hydrogen monitoring in russia is not exactly like a strategy it is more like some main directions of the developments and that's actually how i would uh, uh, illustrate these directions all of my lecture i would illustrate these main challenges and main changes which are ongoing in all this topic and of course it's not possible to cover equally metal hydro topics of atmospheric composition and as far as i'm hydrologist so i would mostly focus on the hydro part of or the russian strategy just probably the similar balance like it was in yana and super presentations before which are very also challenging to hear and to look at. Uh, yes, and uh, I would start from this. As far as uh, this picture was in the first lecture of our uh, summer school, and generally focusing on what is the most the most uh, important in the future development of the whole agenda for the monitoring, uh, also concerning the scale of Russia or the typical system of Russia, uh, these uh, global grand challenges are number one, in which impacts the, uh, both the needs for monitoring on one side, and which impacts how the state organizations which are responsible for the state monitoring and uh, researchers are um, like all of these uh, range challenges. So I would uh, briefly uh, comment this in the chunk of the uh, Russian realities is that uh, the development of methodology is uh, maybe number one in the what can be future of the whole uh, system of the monitoring and there are a few things which are very important this is one is this multidisciplinary uh, actions which also the focus of the changes which can be uh, commented like a strategy there is a deep development of the modeling tools, which I would also try to somehow combat, comment and illustrate. There is a big uh, need for the innovations in the also monitoring things. And in general, this is maybe the main features of the changes. So again, it's not some something like an exact specified policy, it's uh, the process which we can, which we can see like a, a development. So, and the, main, the most important in general for the uh, whole agenda in the monitoring is that's the, the, the is the global change. The global change, which significantly affects both the requirements for monitoring, which enhance the novel types of measurements, data analysis. And illustrating this from the more hydroclimatic system and so also the request from the water management is the, the uh, loss or the death of stationarity. And the approach related to the stationarity was the, uh, it still exists like number one in the whole system. today's processes or today's structure of the, of the monitor. So the whole uh, system for hydropower plants 
in Russia and the whole system, the general water supply system is, uh, is done, built uh, during the Soviet times when the main needs or the main structure of the whole populations done for the whole water assessment programs, the estimation of the, of the structures of the facilities was based on the stationary processes. And the change in the process led us to a big shift in all the activities which we need from the monitoring is the tool which provides the managers, the technicians with the information. This is very deep process starting from the climates and going to the water runoff, the water quality. So the whole uh, hydroclimatic system is really non-station. And the, this is number one, uh, which affects the system itself. And then I would now briefly uh, comment on, on how the system of the monitoring took place first in, in, in Russia. So then we can talk about the strategy. So the, the uh, generally the monitoring is done by the uh, so-called uh, hydronet service. Uh, this is the organization which is belongs to the uh, Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment of Russian Federation. And this uh, service is the main source of the, uh, this organization is the main source of the data, both in metadata and it's, uh, they raise the major meteorological version network and so it's the main source of geological data and their geological origin network as well. So if you look on the Russian territory, you would generally see like in the example in the picture that's the density of the uh, network it depends on the density of population and uh, this is the crucial share of the whole process today in the last decades when the general degradation of the north in terms of the population in the northern regions of Russia, or the low half flow people from these northern regions affect the most general number of stations which are still operating and the quality of the measurements to the complete or disability to find the experts who can do the high tube measurements. And so on the other side, uh, on the more regional scales, there is the, the, the uh, sort of developments in the specific regions. And here, uh, the meteorology is much more, uh, much better developed or in a much better way for hydrology in general. And if we compare, for example, this, this case in the Moscow area, we would see that the meteorological observations are quite dense here. And the specific uh, organization, which is from the Moscow government install a rather dense system of the automatic station for pollution today, where, whereas there is no still uh, constant observation in any sort of hydrology, even in, in this, in, in such huge area. And this is completely a um, huge gap between the uh, quality and the needs from the, our authorities. But the main thing which I want to uh, deliver from this point is that 
generally the main feature of Russia is the big uh, loads of uh, density of uh, network generally for the last decades. Uh, and uh, in particular, uh, in comparison to the other countries of Europe, so we, uh, we talk about Russia as the European country. And so this is just an example of uh, some part of the geological uh, network. So it's the uh, number of stations in the slide, uh, those segments monitoring. Or just an example with that more than 2000 monitoring stations for today, and we have less than 1000 still operating in Russia. The number is decreasing, still decreasing in the last years. So, and then we have the difference in few magnitude difference on the size of the country, and then we will think that a significant part of our territory is completely not covered by even uh, this low resolution, simple uh, type of measure. And so if we go further on with from the uh, sediment monitoring to go more, uh, more important water level, uh, Discharge measurement, so the delivery water quality, uh, and we will have even more drastic difference between the conditions in Russia and its growth in the European Union. And the similar January sure, can be similar in the metro uh, station. And then there is another important point which we need to understand when we talk about the uh, future needs from the monitoring case, the big uncertainty many kind of monitoring problems. So the thing is that, uh, again, I would just use some of the uh, particular examples from the recent uh, from the part of the whole monitoring agenda. So and here we uh, have the um, just right the picture of the chemistry of the solids, which uh, typically transported by the real water. And so, so on the x axis, we have the size, the particles, and on the y axis, we have uh, the relative scale, uh, which shows us the different chemical components which belong to different sizes of the particles. <laughs> Sorry, what's this picture give us regarding the uncertainty of monitoring program? So the main standard which used since 1960 in the Russian hydrometric monitoring network is the filtration, which enables us to um, estimate the uh, such very well uh, very important uh, parameters of the quality like suspended particulate matter concentrations and uh, it's the, the traditional type of measurement is the filtration and uh, the size of the pores which used in the stage monitoring program is the around 10 micro and if you look on the whole range of chemicals in the uh, in this Scale, we see that there is significant part of the chemicals which are not fixed by this kind of the filters. And then we have a big drawback in the real estimates of both integrated um, concentrations of the chemicals as far as everything which is below 10 microns, so just not fixed to the filters. And also, we have a big impact on the estimation of the sediment quality components. And so, uh, this is the, the um, like, uh, not uh, 
very well developed technologies, not very well features. The protocols is the future component also in the uh, today's vision of the monitor. And uh, there is a huge uh, problem with the uh, kind of the uh, kind of time series. It's the, uh, it is the quality of the, the, the constants type of the observation. So almost the, almost all hydrological measurements are still done in the manual form. For example, water levels in the which is related with the uh, or installed in, in general around this country for the automatic control. And so if we look at the meteorological going effort, the situation can be much better. There is much more sensors which are already in the, in the Installation, but it's kind of irregularity. Features system of one, and then the very typical thing, which was you mentioned, from illustrating the background of the system, is the data availability. And here, Russia was. It's specific compared to European conditions. There is almost uh, there, is, there is always the most important issue for the, um, both scientists of Russia or uh, teachers for the education purposes. Everybody knows very well that the significant part of the data is not open data, which is operated by the uh, governmental. So uh, there's of course some uh, uh, exceptions in this general law, but the significant part of the data, for example, what quality data is just only the subject pain. And even the universities have to pay in their prices compared to the actual budget. Research project which we have sometimes is something credible, and that's the crucial point of the whole system. What it needs for the future, and from that I would comment what is now changing. What we where we have the sort of uh, EU uh, improvement in the situation in Russia, in the high hydrometeorological. Um, natural. So, the first is that uh, if we look on this picture, we are we can see that the, the understanding and the reality of the, today's firstly social conditions the, over the huge territory as Russia it is, led to understanding that we that's the transfer from manual to automatic stations. Uh, usual challenge monitoring management. And so Ross Hedromed in the quite long period of 10 years is uh, uh, moving in this way. So and so if we look on the whole structure of the monitoring station, we see that uh, recently there is the uh, ongoing process installation of the automatic station. And then this we take as an example the uh, hydrology and there is at this point it's quite dense, quite uh, narrow, but it's still even this uh, uh, this is still very important. So narrow I mean that there's only one parameter is actually uh, you now measured in more or less automatic control two parameters, the water levels and the temperature. There is a big uh, number of stations which uh, are a big number of bulging stations which are fulfilled with the automatic logic uh, facilities which measure the, these two things the water levels and temperatures. This means like the development of modernization of the network 
And the second thing is of course the new technologies done. And here I will talk about this sector. So there is a big, big um, list of possible uh, applications related to the innovative type type of measurements in the hydrometeorological uh, area. And so if we look on all these deep uh, possibilities, let's say so, there's only a few things related to the atmosphere, to the rainforest, which uh, the parameters which are now on the way with the modernization of the technologies are here. And that's what I said, it's the only soft spot is related to the water levels, which also uh, implementing the novel observation technologies. The general, the whole other things and the monitoring is not still there instead, but of course there is the big shift, big uh, improvements in the, uh, the level of the separate research unit. And the, in many cases, what is also done under the umbrella of this program, there, there are stations which are recently involved very large range of the novel technologies and performance in the research. <clears throat> um, if talking about the uh, strategy to integrate the, some kind of novel technologies, I would also talk about uh, the new methods of touch importance, hydrological feature like what it is. So traditional methods of measurements are done by the current uh, velocity meter propeller. And recently, the, one of the activities which were, uh, came into the system is the involvement of acoustic dark discharge propellers and quite a significant number of the uh, regional cross-hydronet networks were uh, contributed for get uh, this kind of uh, equipment or devices which are quite expensive compared to other things going on. But there is a big problem. Even getting these devices, there are still on the level of monitoring many uh, patients face the problems with your people who will uh, actually work on the on this equipment. So that, that's the, the, this problem is uh, quite well known over the region, but nevertheless, the novel technology integrated to the system. And another support the big uh, possibilities which are done by remote sensing applications, which can be classified as an attempt to monitoring. Uh, I've never been uh, involved into the like constant practice of the monitoring, but many patients are also equipped now with the drones and satellite imagery is the number one to predictions in the predictions of atmospheric different climatic things, which is generally the similar what is going on in the whole scale here, but on the level of the monitoring of exact parameters the network, it's it is more like uh, something out of the scope, but the scientists and the researchers like to really work on it. And of course there is the big discussion some sheets happen are uh, in the area of the opening the data and the data availability. So there is some step forward in Russia which exists or I would not again talk about the meteorological part of these fields, but talking about the hydrology, there are a few you know, novel implementations which uh, give some novel possibilities for, for scientists and society in general. So first, there is almost 10 years, the 
quite big information system operates collect give the open access to the biological data and this is uh, support this uh, central operation region trying to this cadastro we see some down level this uh, system gets the geological data sets is 28 regularly update this in the whole network and there is the level discharge what you call it parameters is really here uh there is the problem that's that it's not uh the data which are published here is classified like not confirmed data and this is a problem for a geological assessment system as far as well this means that they publish the raw data. The raw data can get the errors which are not uh, somehow checked or uh, improved. And this is uh, can also remain the problem. Another thing is the uh, very deep, quite well done system of the autonomous network water levels, which was constructed in the south of Russia, the Lexi Coast first, and the company who installed all these data sets in quite really in quite dense format. The scales of the installations is very nice and it's covered the very Caucasian region of Russia. And actually this happens these implementations started since the big catastrophe which happened in 2013 in the city of Krimsk in the Republic of Adygea. Uh, due to the big flood, there are those big floodings here. Victims in the among the civils. And so after that, this uh, monitoring for, for the Predictions of water levels were standard operated. This is also a data which is easily used, and it's, uh, at least for this region, there's completely a new step in the ground for the, any kind of the data sets. And then, of course, the model modeling. So it's uh, the big, very diverse area. There are different tools which are uh, can be used, like the alternative for incident remote monitoring. And uh, also many interesting and significant efforts are done there. I would just illustrate again the components which deploy in the for, for Russia. It's the predictions of the water flows and the specific tool which is done in Russia. But the Institute of the Province and uh, now is uh, implemented. And this model is uh, implemented at some specific regions of Russia, and generally, uh, slowly, this process of covering the main part of the Russian territory uh, gives the very important tools for both the term and long term predictions of the water flows. And in future, then can, this can be very, uh, I'm saying in today's, it's already a very important uh, tool for output of the uh, research uh, to the needs of the society in terms of the, the management. So, this is what is going on in general in terms of first the uh, State official monitoring programs in Russia. And so, so as again, I've just said that it's like main uh, challenges, the main answer to these challenges, even to, like possibly the ministry responsible for that. But like in the parallel with the uh, 
state monitoring the development of different research programs is the next password the strategy of the uh, monitoring is developed develop. and I'm then on the this last part of the supply of the different things of the of research activities which are used for integrating the knowledge in life. So uh, there is the first I would commend the manipulation experiments and so there are a few things which are uh, important in terms of the uh, scale in terms of the impacts of the peaks of the uh, monitoring network. First is that that's uh, the this is the big background to join different stations together is crucially important for questions and uh, this is the thing which really the monitoring really needs to have something which combine together the different activities. Uh, of course, that's the very important model of the remote setting, different application of the remote setting which also the step forward in forest marine and atmospheric components of uh, monitoring research and superdisciplinary is so the, the needs for superdisciplinary type preservation and the idea of the smear concept in the future is something that we are uh, hoping can be controlled. It puts from this point of uh, that things this year we started the support new grants project, which is done under Mark Kumola leadership. And it's devoted to the installation in some way or the development of the novel observation tools in the Moscow region. So unfortunately, it's not possible to install this in this budget small station in Moscow, but the Process of integrating things like the novel sensors is something that is really important and what we are, what we are looking at in that. And the, as the part of this process, the part of the project in Russia, is some kind of research activities which are also under the umbrella of such kind of information problems to ST peaks. And here, uh, I would mention the Spike Singer Network, which is uh, combined the like very big international society, the, the one quite important and famous region of Russia, and the main tribute of Baikal Lake, in order to implement and also low monitoring technology, the modeling tools, with the specific focus on the transfer of the pollutants in this region. And uh, having this, uh, kind of activities is also another important feature of uh, on one side industrialization of science in Russia and on the other side is sustainable technologies development. And the two which is uh, looks like specific uh, main positive answer to the real realities of the Russian is the combination of different modeling approaches. Here on the uh, slide, there is the example for this in the river, basin, which is under this listening community, integrates the both climatic and hydrological, hydrological in terms of the funnel and water quality and modeling and monitoring tools in order to provide the uh, sufficient Data sets which could be used for the stakeholders generally the understanding of the inputs from the cache from the lake Baikal. So, sorry, when we have very raw data, such kind of uh, application is uh, something which is quite efficient in scale of project. And there is uh, another part 
Another thing mention this so I would uh, go to the topic of the uh, the Arctic knowledge. This is uh, today's became a very important tool in the whole sphere of. Operation with the government research society in Russia. Uh, the Arctic understanding of its importance for Russia, Russia consideration. It's, uh, there is, of course, a big implementation, uh, different strategies for development of the Russian Arctic. This also involves the, uh, say, the union of the Research for that and quite a few uh, facilities which were done in order to implement the challenges which exist for us in the Arctic. So, the one of them, the Arctic Environment Laboratory, which was built 10 years ago at the Moscow State University, which was done in order to utilize all the valuable observation modern products. In the circumpolar Arctic and relate the impacts of the climate, environmental processes, and the changes of the world's uh, well being and economic development. So, this several was in line with quite many other facilities and uh, follow the risks which are suggested to be. A crucially important for the whole country development in the Arctic continent. These risks are what's already mentioned the economic development and the fragile environment which bind together, and of course, the adaptation to climate change. So, uh, another thing which also important to mention in the context of the different challenges which exist in the uh, development of the monitoring system in Russia is the transboundary issues. And the management of the transboundary rivers remains uh, crucially important in any part of the of Russia. This, there is the few hot spots between the border with China and the joint location and also in the border, in the lake like which belongs to this, such kind of location. But on the other side, there is a few other uh, areas, and in total, Russia have the longest uh, surface border among the whole countries of the world, and the areas where this border is littered by the rivers. Uh, Pollution points is the separate level of the development in terms of the monitoring. And as an example, I just showed the project which was done between a few countries in the Western Vienna Basin, Western Boom Basin, as the case example. And for Russia, it was just in Western Vienna, the hotspot areas on the border with Belarus. Activities also involves the very big development of the infrastructure for um, installation of new monitoring tools. And then back to the selling engagement, there is constant needs and constant requests from the government to uh, use the whole available data in order to estimate the possible lake bike from. Selinga River and then from the Mongolia, which is the other part of Selinga. There is also the things which involves the constant remote sensing monitoring. Uh, the few uh, things to summarize the main development in the whole monitoring system is the big focus on the large research, which 
authorities uh, also can be used like an example so the alternative for the state monitoring and there is few particular research projects also can be mentioned like uh, tools for improving the data sets and the knowledge and then improving the monitoring is different like uh, the activities are done Elsewhere, including some very big international projects which involve Russia, the case study areas, different activities are there, starting with the different pollution sources to more fundamental problems like the water runoff or something else. That's quite important, the internationalization, which are combined together with monitoring strategies. It's one of the most famous projects which evolved and put together more than 10 years ago, with all research and training units of the Arctic or the Interact, and still the activities are sponsored by this European project. It's very important as far as enable scientists to monitor the Arctic. Uh, there is many things which were done in terms of the conceptualization uh, of the results of the different sorts of monitoring. And this is the mission of the Arctic, which was done recently. And with this, I would uh, finish the talk. Greet the all participants again. Hope that's the next step for the small research projects will be successful for those who participate there. And we will get the wishes for the good luck on the today, tomorrow's last day of the good school. I will finish my presentation. Thank you for